Good evening and welcome to Faith Bible Church of San Francisco. Um, we have our prayer meeting tonight and thank you for joining us tonight. And as we continue to celebrate the Christmas season, 
we want to sing with you another Christmas hymn. Uh, do you join us? We'll be singing A Little Town of Bethlehem. that the Lord Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem as prophesied. And now we'll be having our meditation from our deacon Sam La Cruz.
Hello? 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 Anybody could hear me? Hello? 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 Are we starting a service? Oh my God, I have to confirm it. Okay, we can, can you So does it mean we can start? Did anybody tell me that I am ready? I've been ready. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me or what, but uh, uh, we're going to start our, our meditation for uh, this tonight. I'll be reading the first Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 to, 1 to 6. That's the basis of our meditation tonight about the servant's conduct. In serving the Lord. Okay, I'll be reading now, First Thessalonians chapter 2. For yourselves, brethren, know our entrance is unto you, that it was not in vain, but even after we had suffered before, and were shameful, entreated as we know, at Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. For our exhortation was not of deceit, nor of uncleanness, nor in guile, but as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as, not as pleasing men, but God, we try it our hearts. For neither at any time used we flattering words. As we know, nor a cloak of covetousness, God is witness. Nor of men sought we glory, neither of you, nor yet of others, when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. Before we start, we can look to the Lord in prayer and bless our meeting tonight. Dear God, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this night, that your blessings be upon us. That your word that I have to be, so I have to speak, is the truth and it's coming from you only, and disregard all those words that is in my mind, that is not pleasing to you. Lord, you are a great God, and we want to serve you, because you are a faithful God. We love you and entrust our life to you, and even our service for tonight. Thank you, Father God. Christ and pray. Amen. Like I said, the servant's conduct is the title of my meditation tonight. As you know, since October, you may remember that my topic has been with regards to Apostle Paul. It's say that from being a persecutor, and becoming one of the greatest missionaries of all time. Apostle Paul experienced much suffering as described in 2 Corinthians 11, 16 to 33. I'll just give a brief summary of this. Uh, position, it says his sufferings not only come physically, but spiritually, it's an opposition from both Jews and Gentiles. He has been prisoned for so many times, beaten several times, faced death again and again. He's been stoned once, 
three times in a shipwreck and 20, 24 hours in an open sea in constant danger from rivers and floods, from bandits, from his own countrymen and false Christians. He is exhausted in pain, hunger, and thirst, from colds and lack of floating apart, from all that external sufferings. He is burdened by his responsibility for all the churches that he had visited and established. His spiritual burdens were even greater than his physical sufferings. In all those trials and sufferings, he never gave up, for he knows that he is serving the risen Christ. Once I read a book from a book of Charles Wendell, Great Days with the Great Lives. And he was teaching in Dallas Seminary. And one of his students who was about to speak, because every time there's a graduation, they let someone speak. And his title is, Do you want to have a great ministry? Or do you want to be great? Do you want to have a great ministry? Or do you want to be great? That is the title of the message of that student. When he uttered those words in a single question, he, he captured the crucial issue. Greatness. Greatness not as the world defines it, but greatness according to the standard of the Almighty God. Great leaders are servants, like Apostle Paul. Like his master, Jesus Christ, became a servant. Moses became a servant. These two, my heroes, Moses and Paul, came from a prestigious family. They have a good upbringing. They are rich. Do you know that Paul came from a rich family? He cannot go to Jerusalem and study if he's not, uh, if they don't have uh, the money in those times. So in our text for tonight in First Thessalonians 2 and 3, chapter 2, verse 2 and 3 said, For even after we had suffered, Paul had suffered already, and were shameful and treated, as you know, at Philippi, Still, we were bold in our God to speak much, to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. For our, our expectation was not of deceit, nor of uncleanness, nor in guile. In his sufferings, he continued to spread the gospel without fear. He preached without pretense, no secret or self-importance. His life is like an open book. From being a Jew and a Gentile, they know his origin. They knew who he was from the beginning and how he was transformed. He has nothing to hide, and he has nothing to be ashamed of. He is transparent. He is preaching the true gospel, who is the Christ, the Messiah, and the Savior of the whole world.
as you can see in verses 2 and 3, he said, uh, after all those sufferings, he continued to preach the gospel because he is not afraid. There is no fear because he knows the price he is about to take, to have. He's not relying on those material things, temporary things, but he is relying on the eternal things. For us as believers of Christ, whatever our position, whether we are a pastor, a deacon, an elder, or a leader of our church, or just a maid, just a believer of Christ, truly a believer. We must be transparent. Our motto would be transparency in our life as a child of God. Transparent in, in whether we're in the church or out of the church, wherever we are, there is no secret in our life. We have nothing, we should have nothing to hide because we are serving our Savior, our Lord, a faithful God that is always with us. Our ministry must be based on who is seated in the throne of our hearts. The life that we have right now is just an extension of God's grace. We are living because we are under the grace of God and a faithful God. This grace is a gift. Like Paul in his ministry, he has nothing to hide. We must, in our life as Christians, We should not have any secret because we, it, there will be the time that our secret will be revealed. Kahit na nang gawin natin pagtatago, lalabas at lalabas. Paul's life is focused on Christ. Just like us as children of God, we must also focus on Christ and we should not be fearful and we should boldly proclaim the gospel that brings salvation to the lost. That is Paul's life. He boldly preached without fear, without shame, the gospel of Christ. For us, we are children of God. We are adopted children of God. So we have the responsibility. We have the duty to proclaim the good news of salvation, especially now. You know what's happening around us right now. War there, war everywhere. Famine, a lot of people are being homeless. A lot of people are hungry. A lot of people are living in fear. Fear of what they're going to eat tomorrow or fear if they're still be alive tomorrow because of what's happening around us. Let's look. So we have the duty to proclaim the God's work. Continue the good work that's entrusted to us as children of God. Look at Philippians 1.6. Philippians 1 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. We should not stop proclaiming the good news. Let us not stop to do what God has commanded us to do. Each one of us has, has a responsibility. Each one of us has a gift of service to the Lord. 
And Colossians 1.10 says that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. See, if we continue doing the work that is entrusted with us, we will be pleasing in the sight of God. And become fruitful in everything that we do. Not only fruitful in things that we do, but there'll be knowledge that is given to us. Knowledge, if we obey Him, knowledge is we continue to study His Word. Continue to have a relation with the, relationship with the Lord every time. And you know that there'll be blessing. Blessing upon blessing will come to us. Not always material things, but blessing spiritually, physically. Continuous blessing to our children and grandchildren. And that is what the Lord is saying to us, just continue the work that you have given to us and we will be blessed. Not only us, but to all the lives of our loved ones. And look look at the verse, verse 4, what the for text it says, but as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so, we speak not as preaching men, not as preaching men, but God, which try at our hearts. Try, approve. The first one is transparency. Now it's been tried. Apostle Paul is a messenger. He's been tried. And been approved by God in all circumstances, whether good or bad, in sickness and in health, is doing its part. All trials and persecution he endured to prove his allegiance to Christ Jesus. For us, as children of God, the Lord has examined Paul's heart. And it is well fit to accomplish the word entrusted to him in the gospel. He is tried and he is approved by the Lord. Not only tried and And approved, but he is trusted. He is well trusted because of his willingness to obey and his motive. It's not, it's not to please man, but always to please God alone. In our life experience as a child of God, can we truly say, with truth that we are tried and trusted with the truth of the gospel. To spread it without pleasing men, but only God. Matthew 16, verses 24 and 25 says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any one of you would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life, he will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Even when we follow the Lord, it must be complete. Walang, well, what do you call it? Walang, well, if 
Kaso bali, pagsunod sa Panginoon. Deny or get rid of earthly pleasure that this world can give temporarily. Because anything that is in, the world, in this world is only temporary. It only gives you a happiness only in this world. You cannot bring it to heaven. You cannot bring it with the Lord where he is. And being a servant to the cause of Christ, he gives us eternal joy. Not temporary, but says eternal joy that he can give us. Our life will be full of joy. We can practice here right now if we truly serve him. That's why the question for us now, who am I really serving? Are we really serving completely our Lord? Only you or me can answer that question. If we, are, uh, if we are really transparent to the work of the Lord, are we truth, truthful to the work of the Lord? And are we being tried already in the work of the Lord? On verses 5 and 6, it says, Nor men ought we glory, neither of you, nor yet of others, when ye might have been burdensome, as the apostles of Christ, but we were gentle among you. <clears throat> Is that? Or five and six. Is that yes. For neither any time used with flattering words, for we know nor a cloak of covetousness. God is witness. And six says, Nor of men ought we glory, neither of you, nor yet of others, whom ye might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. See, there's transparency. He's been tried. We have been trusted. And now, is how we talk. Flattery words. Which is, the way we talk should always be on the subject which is Christ. Always only Christ should be the subject of our life as a Christian. He should be seated in the throne of our heart whenever we speak, wherever we are, in the pulpit or just sharing the word or in a Bible study. Let Christ rule our hearts. So, Whatever words that comes out of our mouth, if he is inside our heart, he will teach us what to say. Apostle Paul always point to Christ as the main focus of his preaching. Preaching or sharing the word that does not exalt Christ is empty preaching, empty Bible study. And this sharing the word of God, if it's not Christ, who is the focus of everything. Any one of us can share the gospel, but make sure that we are using the right word. When speaking what the word that come out of the mouth, control our tongue. As James 3, verses 2 and 7 and 10 says, For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able to riddle the whole body. He, he, that we, can, we, if we don't offend anyone, you can be a perfect man. No man is perfect. Always there's something in my mouth that comes out. 
and seven, she says, for every kind of beast and birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tame and hath been tame mankind. But a tongue can no man tame. It is full of unruly evil, full of deadly poison. And nine says, therewith bless we God, even the Father. Therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be in simple words of those verses. What's the words that came out of our mouth? Think first before you say it. Like in verse 10, the same tongue can hurt and bless anyone. What comes out cannot be brought back. Pag nilabas mo na, kahit na nang sakit, masakta na yung tao, hindi mo na may babalik. You cannot just say, oops, slip of the tongue. Remember, what comes out of our mouth comes from the heart. So it cannot be taken back. And in, you always speak the truth. And before we share, before something about Christ, we must pray. Ask for the Holy Spirit to teach us what we have to say. Whoever is your audience, always speak the truth. Do not overly impress your audience with flattery words, flowery words, or vain words. Just go to the point. The gospel is easy. In simple words, you can say the gospel with love. But always ask the Holy Spirit to fill us up whenever we want to preach. We want to share the word of God. We want to share the gospel of truth that can save the sinners. Vain words, bubbling words, and repetitious words, even in our prayers. It says in March 6, March 6, Simon said, God always knows what we need and what is in our heart. Don't be like other sects. They kept on repeating and repeating the same prayer. This also happens to us in our prayer time. There are times our prayers come only from our mouth and not coming from our heart. And what happens, we forget that we have said it already, but we keep on repeating words again and again. Let us be truthful, especially in a prayer time. That's why the Lord wants us to be in our meditation, be in one place, a silent place, that we can commune with Him. Truly. And not just reading, but meditating on His Word. And not only reading and meditating on His Word, but listen to what the Holy Spirit is impressing in our life for that day. What He has in store for us for that day. Matthew 15, 89 is about vain teachings. The NLT version says, These people honor me only with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. Their worship is first in vain, for they replace God's commands with their own teachings. So we have to be careful what we say, what we teach. 
in Titus 1.10 said, beware, beware of rebellious people. Mere talkers. Basta may masabi lang. And deceivers, especially those of circumcision group. They are false teachers. They engage in useless talk and deceive people because they don't have the truth. We have to be aware, beware, be aware of false teachers, even in our own group. Yung magandang magsalita. Basta may masabi lang. Nakakahikayat. You know what's a, who is the good talker? Joel Austin. Austin. He's a good talker. But he is a cult. I was uh, listening to the, I was watching a television last night about the faults that he is teaching. That he is not teaching about the truth of the salvation. He is not teaching about sin that men should repent for him. Sins is an everyday living. And men know already that they are sinful. So it's just like ignoring it. I live by it and it will change. Just think, think positive and you'll always be right. And it's not only him. There's a lot. Even uh, 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 was that Oprah Winfrey. And even this Joey, Joey Myers, what they are teaching as false. Sabi pa nga ng ibang pastor, our God, may utang para sa kanila ang Panginoon dahil sa kanilang pagbibigay. That is false. God said, beware, be aware of false teachers deceiving people of the truth. I don't know why so many people, thousands of people are listening to them. They are mega churches. So be aware of all these teachings. Even Prince. I think you know who Prince is too. Okay, just Continue. James 1.26 If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, it's him himself. And his religion is worthless. So be careful. Listen well what they're saying. Be like the Bereans. Be like the Bereans. They hear the gospel. They hear the preaching. They don't stop there. They search and examine the scriptures upon the hearing of the word, if it is true. So don't just believe the preaching. Don't just believe what people are saying. Write it down. See, look at the word of God. Search for it and find out if it's really true what he's saying. That is a real Christian. Not only hearers, but doers of the words. And this I will end, Proverbs 117. And this how useless to spread a net in full view of all the birds. How useless to spread a net in full view of all the birds. If a bird knows how to avoid an obvious trap, the bird knows the trap. Surely a person, especially a Christian like us, who knows the truth, 
can avoid a senseless deceiver. If an animal can sense it, we as Christians should know it too. Again, as I started, I repeat, do you want to have a great ministry or you just want to be great? This is all for us, whatever our position. We want to be great, really, truly. Great for the Lord, everything for Him. Our focus should be on the Lord always. And we will have a great ministry or we have a great life ready to meet our maker when the time comes. We have done our part as a children of God. Thank you. And I hope our conduct I said, may be truly pleasing to the Lord in a lifestyle, in a way of talk, in our truth, truthfulness, in our life to be transparent wherever we are. Let's pray. Be God, Heavenly Father, but thank you for your word, for revealing to us your goodness, your mercy and especially your grace that we are living in it only. Only through your grace that we are here, we can come to you boldly. We love you, Lord. And forgive me if any word that is not right has been uttered. Forgive me, Lord. But everything, in all circumstances, we love you, Lord. <coughs> May it be a blessing to me and blessing to all. Thank you, Father God. Amen. Amen.